Uh, everyone can hear me? Welcome to be here. Um, let me give a quick introduction of WeWin with OCP. Uh, WeWin is uh, uh, planner members and service providers for OCP. And we design servers storage. And also we do REC integ integration for OCP. I remember um, um, my first meeting of OCP is, um, was about six years ago. And I believe by that time, OCP was not funded. And a couple months after uh, the first OCP summit happened. So I believe that's one of the, that, that's uh, 21 or 22 members that's in, in, in the meeting room. And WeWin is very active in OCP. And every year, you can see uh, many people in the group dressed in a uniform like this color. Uh, we dress like a tennis ball and bouncing around in the OCP summit. With so many years of experience designing OCP gears, um, I want to uh, give you an overview how do we, do we cultivate for the next generation of data center. And we have been talking about cloud, talking about uh, virtualization, and also uh, probably edge computing. And for the recent years, we also see so many new devices like JBuff, or AI appliance. And many of them, they are impermanent. The demands for the data center IT years, the fundamental demands, still unchanged, and they are high power efficiency and high speed, good thermal solution with uh, reliability and serviceability. And these four areas are our focus. So I'm going to give you an introduction of these four areas uh, we, win, we are working on. The first one is the power efficiency. Um, we know uh, the OCP regs take good advantage of use power uh, pooling. However, to deliver the power from the bus bar to IT gears, and the transmi transmission loss could be significant, especially at the bus bar clip area. And in addition, the power consumption for ASICs become bigger and bigger, and sometimes uh, we have the challenge of current shock. That's the reason WeWin has been working on 48 volts. And doing the 48 volts, there is one method very easy, is we just drop the 48 volts to 12 volts, use a brick. And that is very easy, but the efficiency is not optimum. Sorry, I, I run too fast. Therefore, last year, in OCP, we have a show. We show um, 48 volt use a POL solution. The POL solution give us a much, uh, uh, I think, about 1% higher efficiency more than use of just, uh, just a brick. And we also have a white paper. And after that, we, this year, so we have 48 volt OCP product line. And this year, so we have another technology we want to share with you, is we use switch caps methods to drop 48 volts to 12 volts with a higher efficiency. Give you an example, if we can do that with higher efficiency, we drop from the 48 volt to 12 volt. If we put in the Tiago pass, we just need to add one power transition board to drop from 48 volt to 12 volt, then we are done. We don't have to change anything on the motherboard. We can just leverage the existing motherboards. That's very good, right? And we go ahead, we design, uh, we are working on a prototype. This prototype is, um, the footprint is about one meter to two meter with, uh, I think, I believe it's 330 nodes, Tioga Pass nodes and use 48 volt. That's, that's every canister here actually has two nodes. 
very high density with a very high power density, high power requirement, and that's in the immersion cooling. Uh, we will mention a little bit about immersion cooling. The efficiency, we also have the comparison of the efficiency, the, the efficiency between these three methods. 12 volts, 48 volts, drop to 12 volts. You just use a brick. And also 48 volts, POL, and 48 volts uses switch caps methods. The efficiency here does not include in transmission loss. And the POLs and the efficiency, they are really raise each other. Next one, I'm want, I want to talk about the high speed. The signal on AC, on the, on the, on, on the IT gears are become bigger and bigger. So I, I, I never, it it's keep, just keep increasing like a more slow. And with uh, PCI Gen 4 coming, we are preparing for the next generation data centers with the highest um, speed. We need to have the new design guideline and simulation validation for our PCB design, PCBA design and layout, and also including the innovation on the approach for the design, even for the PCB material selection. And for PCIe Gen 4, uh, we have a prototype. We use a broken PCIe Gen 4 Atlas switch. On our design, and the design, sorry, is a, a doctor nose. The doctor nose can host 16 compute accelerators with up to four Host. And we are showing this product, this prototype live in our booth, A15, live with PCIe Gen 4 speed. And I would like to invite uh, VJ, VP of Broadcom, to share us and uh, to give us a, a, a very quick overview about uh, the Atlas uh, PCIe Gen 4 uh, feature. Hello. So, first, before I start into talking about Atlas, I really want to, uh, to you know, commend Sunlight's team. Uh, we, we, uh, you know, typically, new silicon is always a challenge bringing it up. And this was a 96-lane PCI Express switch, first in the industry, um, and 96 ports. And you know, they got the, the chip up and running in within a day. Within the first day, they had all the 96 PCI Express lanes up and running, which is a tremendous achievement. So you know, uh, good job by yeah, Sunlight's team. So the Atlas switch is a 96-lane switch. It supports downstream port containment, SRIS, and it, ha it, it has 96 ports on it. This is the most uh, number of ports you would see in a PCI Express switch, and we did this primarily for the NVMe SSD market, uh, given the, the, the form factors we are seeing, and we are seeing innovations where consumer-grade NVMe drives are being used to uh, you know, uh, uh, to, uh, you know, behind the PCIe switches. So uh, uh, it's, it supports fabric mode, so just not a tree hierarchy. You can actually create a cross fabric. You can create mesh topologies. You can create very interesting topologies with, um, uh, with, the, with, the, with the Atlas product line. In addition to that, if you go to the Liquid booth, you'll see uh, de demonstrations of composable infrastructure where they're using pure PCIe uh, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the back plane, and you could do GPGPUs, and you could do uh, storage disaggregation in the most efficient uh, manner possible. So, so with that, I'd like to you know, give it back to Sunlai. Thank you, Sunlai. Thank you, thank you. Uh, I want to uh, give, a, uh, give thanks to Broadcom because this is their first chip, right? Coming out, and we bring it up together within, I think, eight hours. Yeah and we bring it up. So this, uh, uh, it shows how ready Broadcom is and how ready we are for this uh, uh, technology. And about the thermal solutions that we are working on, there are three levels of thermal solutions we are focusing. The one is the chassis level, then rack level, then data center level. 
you might feel odd why we are working on data center level. I will give you an explanation. The first one, chassis levels, we have all the products, uh, we use all the technology like everybody use. However, we do not believe to use the chassis level, like uh, use a look heat pipe. The design has to be rigid for a specific design. We believe if we remove the heat sink, they got to be flexible. So that is the area we are working on, and we, are, we, we, we already have some ideas, so we are, we are working on a prototype on this. The next one is a rug level. The rug level, the challenge is um, we do invest investigation on how much we have to distribute the coolant to all the IT gears, and we find the solution is very expensive especially the distribution units need to be very, very, very big and to pump the coolant to each IT gears. So the, the, the one of the way to resolve it is uh, to use a two-phase cooling. So we do a lot of study on two-phase cooling and if you are interested, uh, we have work session, I will invite you to join the work session tomorrow. Okay, in addition to the direct coolings, we also have the immersion coolings. The prototypes is coming next month, so we will begin to do the test with the technology I mentioned to you, 48 volts, two-stage switch cast technology. That's what we are, we, are, we are working on that. The data center level, um, let me explain to you why we come to this. This one is, uh, is, is um, very interesting projects I have because we have a new lab and in the lab I have a rec room host up to um, 36 racks, I believe 36 racks. And in Taipei to have a lab can host up to 40, 36 red racks. The power is very big and how do I optimize the energy, the, 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 the uh, uh, PUE, that would be my challenge. And I really want to bring the natural air. In the high rise, our office building is in the high rise. How do I bring in the, the natural air and vent the hot air out? That's challenging. What we used to do is in low cooling. We have same air circulate inside the room and become very hot, like a 60 degree C, then we cool it down to 20 degree and coming back, just a continuous circulation. That's really, really energy consumption. So I designed for use of natural cooling in a high rise building, and I believe this might be beneficial if I can share the experience some days with people, they, have, they don't have choice to build where the data center is. So, what I'm doing is uh, we bring fix, uh, fr the, the free air in, and if the free air is in the condition what we want, we don't have to do anything. We just do a filter to fill out the pollution. If that's not, we have opportunity to mix with hot air. Or mix with hot air, then cool it down, or remove more moisture from the air. So that's another way we are going to do We, we are doing that. So, for example, the green area is the air quality we want, and the temperature and humidity, this is temperature, uh, this is temperature, this is relative humidity. The number inside represents the energy of the air, in the, in the, the energy in the air. Okay, if the areas is what you desire, and outside air is, is inside this area, that's good. And the, your desired areas might not be constant. In the night, in the daytime, might be different. So if yours are outside air is, is, is inside the area, then that's good. If outside air area is outside the area, and hot air is in another side, if you mix that, 100% of outside air will be here, 100% of hot air air will be here if you bring them together. Then at a point, I think I missed a point. This is uh, not inside. Hold on, let me do that. 
So if you mix these two areas, you might have opportunity to have a poem, poems close to the green area you want. And if somehow the outside air is not that good, then you can mix them at the points that's good for cool down, use AC at the points. You need to use AC and to mix airs. And how about what do I have right now for the past two, well, this dev is just running for two months. Actually for the current weather and humidity, even the humidity in Taiwan is pretty high. I haven't turned on my AC yet. I only use fan and that's enough. Okay, and someday I will publish more data on this. Finally, about the service and reliability, we wins make a lot of IT gears. We have billions of data from our manufacturing tests and also from our validation lab. Billions of data. We have our own test software and with those data, how can we best utilize those data we have opportunity to analyze what is what hardware has is uh, which brand it has a uh, highest uh, reliability, which brands probably is suboptimal. So we have opportunity to understand and to do invest investigation. In addition to that, the software also allow us to understand our test software when there is a failure. The manufacturer wants us to tell where the system failure and how do I repair it. And with years of experience, we accumulate, we are able to make it as a module and to put into our software. We have a, a software called Class Manager that can go with RSD. So with this, you, you, you will have opportunity to use this module to do diagnosis. And also the data also allow us to do something is we use the data to analyze our test. Sometimes our test time is more than 24 hours. And is that the best data, to, best way to test? Can we save more by reduce time? Or can we change the test order and give more efficiency to find out the issue earlier? So we have a lot of opportunity to reduce the cost to increase the reliability, even increase the serviceability if we can put our diagnosis, diagnosis part to our class manager. So these are the areas we are all working on and we will publish the data very soon. Tomorrow we have one section talking about partial of the data we analyze and we can share with you. So in my final presentation, um, Four areas we are working. We are working on the powers, high speed, thermal, and service and reliability. We have four work section tomorrow, and we welcome you can join the, our sections. And our booth is A15. We have we, we are showing 48 volts OCP product lines. We are showing the, our doctor nodes with the PCI Gen 4 as well as the PCI switch. Thank you. Any questions? I, one question. So the switch cap topology, do you think it will become mainstream? Because we're hearing mostly that from Google, and not from Microsoft or Facebook. So what do you think is the, your comment? Um, I'm not a fortune teller, but um, I see there are some major company is working on this direction right now. Okay, but I cannot tell which one. Yeah, I have a question. Uh, you mentioned that you, in a data center, you optimize for the PoE, right? Yes. So is that a production data center or is it a test data center? That's our test data centers. Okay. That's a, a red room for our validation in Taipei City, our lab. Okay. Okay, and the reason is uh, I, I feel like there's a, there's a responsibility of citizens, good citizens, if I have a chance to uh, save the energies, uh, th that's what I want to do. So I, I just want to do differently and, right, and share the information to everybody. Center, then uh, how valid is the parameter you gained from a test data center to apply to a real data center? Um, th th this one is not, um, I do not intend 
to compare with real data center because each data center, they are location dependent. Right. I'm compare, compare with the lab, what we, the lab, what we used to have. Right now, I have a new lab and I have an old lab. Got Same it. location. Mm -hmm. I will move from the old lab to new lab. I want to bring in the free, free air cooling in a high-rise building in tropical area. How do I do? How can I save more energy and still can provide good environment for my test validation? I see. So if a customer say uh, you have this uh, good data uh, algorithm to optimize PoE, then um, if they ask you for suggestions, can you use your data from the test center and uh, give them some recommendations or? That's very likely. That's the reason in a couple months, because right now I only have two months. When I go through summer, mm -hmm. hopefully another winter, I have the whole years of data. I'm going to publish the data and the test result. Okay. Thanks. And to share to everybody. Okay, any more questions? If no, I bet uh, that's uh, conclude my presentation. Thank you. Thank you so much.